At 10 years old, when most kids dream about going to places like Disneyland, my parents broke the news to me and my 13-year-old sister that we were going to Syria. For them, it was a cultural experience of a lifetime. For us, it was hardly a holiday. We pictured ruins, museums, all things old. We were too young to appreciate what was ahead. They dragged us from markets, to mosques, to restaurants, and ruins all over Damascus. To our surprise, the city was exciting and vibrant. At the time, I was a huge football fan, and all I thought and talked about was soccer. The World Cup was on my mind, and I was obsessed with getting a Syrian jersey and playing whenever I had the chance. As we left the capital to visit the Syrian countryside, the driving time increased and so did my restlessness. Every so often, my parents would stop the van, open the door, and push me out so I could kick the ball around. One of those roadside kickabouts happened in the ancient city of Palmyra. I met a group of 15 or so boys of various ages. They welcomed me, especially in my messy shirt. I stood out with my pasty white skin and blue eyes. They couldn't speak English and I couldn't speak Arabic. All we had in common was football, reminding me again why it's universally called the beautiful game. As the sun set on the ruins of Palmyra, we played till dark. What I didn't know was that four months later, war would break out in Syria. Palmyra would soon be overtaken by ISIS. It's hard to appreciate that I once ran through these ancient ruins, part of which are no longer there after being blown up by extremists. This city, rich in culture and history, would be decimated as the world watched on in horror. The destruction of these irreplaceable artifacts weren't just a loss to Syria, but civilization. However, what has troubled me most for the past seven years are these boys. Where are they? Did they survive the war? The ISIS occupation? Are they refugees in camps in Jordan? Are they in Canada? Where are their mothers and fathers, siblings and grandparents? Are they even still alive? As the 10 year old me carried on comfortably, this 17 year old looks back at the loss of their youth and innocence. I want this to be the extent of their losses, but I know that's unlikely. And one day telling their stories, I hope it serves as a reminder that suffering continues in Syria. Every day, lives are still being lost and destroyed, and the world should not give up looking for a solution to this conflict. In June, I will graduate from high school and get on with my life. In the meantime, I will always wonder what happened to theirs.